Now you have this white stained denim splotchy mess. So most people think that I am, well, a little bit crazy when it comes to car purchases. And for the most part, I think that they're wrong. But this actually might be crazy because I bought a van, which is not an exotic. It's not any sort of supercar. It's not a sports car. It's not sporty at all. I bought a van, regular minivan, except for the fact that it was on a little TV show called Pimp My Ride. And on the show, they took this van from the regular minivan thing that you see everywhere in every mall and every parking lot. And they made it into this incredibly garish, loud, pink and purple mishmash of 2000s for car culture that you can ever, ever see. And not only that, this van was then neglected after the show was over. So if we're talking about Pimp My Ride, there were a lot of exposés over the years about like the truth about Pimp My Ride. And I, I don't know much about it other than the fact that I just bought one of these cars. But what I do know is that they actually did do all the work to these cars and they, they worked their butts off to get these cars out in time. I mean, you're talking about six seasons and 20 episodes each. That's a lot of cars. Plus you gotta work on other people's cars because these are legitimate shops. You have West Coast Customs, you have gas. These are legitimate shops doing the legitimate work for a lot of people. And what a lot of shows do, there's a lot of car shows that are kind of like cooking shows where they have two cars and they'll have one finished and they'll buy one that's a junker and they go, oh my God, see us tomorrow. We have to get this done and the customer's coming and we, and it's, it's not very legitimate uh, because they get from point A to point B in like seven days and they go, wow, we really pulled it together even though that build took six months. But Pimp My Ride, I don't think that they took the entire build into account. I think that they had uh, a few months to do it. I know that the people that they pimped their ride, those people were basically left without a car for a few months. And they had to be on their own. They either rented a car, MTV wouldn't reimburse them, uh, or they had to get another car, which is kind of, <laughs> it, it defeats the purpose <laughs> of doing this. But I do know that they did give them the cars. I think they had clauses in that they couldn't sell the cars and they also took off modifications. So my van actually had this one modification called a Vroom Box. Now, if you never heard of a Vroom Box, it's, it's not like you're uh, living under a rock because nobody's ever heard of a broom box. It's because it, it, it was a company that was supposed to be launched by this episode, uh, as far as I can tell, but they never made any products. So I went to the Roombox website and I tried to get this thing and they don't sell any. Now what a Roombox is, is it's a bunch of speakers and it's a module that allows you to uh, sound like your car to sound like any other car. So you can make your car, a Dodge Caravan, sound like a Ford GT or Aston Martin Vanquish or something, you know? So they had that installed in the, in the show, but before they gave it to the girl who was the, uh, the, the mark, I guess, they took that out. So now underneath the car where the spare tire used to be, there is just nothing. So they would put that big subwoofer enclosure where they had piping all the sounds of the supercars, but now they don't have that. So uh, I know that they took out a lot of those things for safety reasons. Like this is just like, you can't put a fish tank in a car. Like it's just <laughs> what happens if you crash? Like that's, that's just, that's not something that they can do. But everything else was in the car. So I decided to take it upon myself to buy this van and restore it. It's, it's a bit of a tall order when your usual fare is exotics and supercars and that sort of thing, because I actually have never worked on a van. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a little bit out of my comfort zone, if you can believe that, because uh, I had to go to uh, Advance Auto Parts and order a bunch of stuff. And oddly enough, they had everything in stock. So that, that was kind of a that's kind of a weird, it wasn't a coincidence because I, I guess that's what they do. That's, that's actually why the stores are there. But me going and ordering $3,000 worth of parts for a van was, was, was just kind of like a weird mental uh, thing for me because I, the van wasn't worth that much. Now, I originally saw this van years ago, like four years ago uh, in a Jalopnik article. It was for sale somewhere in Boston. It was just rotting away at, in, a, in a Boston, uh, I think, uh, dismantler's yard. And it was for sale for 1400 bucks. Needed a little bit of work. The uh, van was a little tired, but it ran and drove. Flash forward to four years later, 
The van was still for sale, but now with a way better shrewd negotiator price of $850. So I immediately saw this as an opportunity because I've never seen a Fit My Ride van. I wanna see what it's like. So one of my favorite things about this build is the fact that I found it on Auto Tempest and I've been using Auto Tempest for many, many years and I have found lots of my cars and it, it just so happens that just cruising through, I don't know what I was searching for. It might've been like rare or sport or famous or something like that. And then it just popped up and I was like, oh, okay. And the fact that it was still available, I was like, all right. So basically I had a, a hole burning in my pocket with, uh, with money that I need to throw at this owner. So I just called up the guy and he said, yeah, actually the van is available. And me, like the negotiator I am, I offered him exactly what he asked for. And I said, I will send you this money. I know you're a stranger. So how do you want me to send you almost $1,000? I don't know if you just made up this listing or what, but I just sent you this money. And later on, I had a car carrier pick the van up and then bring it to my shop. And lo and behold, there is a Pimp My Ride van. Now there was a troubling amount of mold on this car. It was, uh, it was, I mean, I probably, I probably should have worn gloves, you know, that could have been a concern. I may have taken quite a bit off my life, but I got the van and it didn't have anything as far as air conditioning or power steering or alternator or anything because the uh, belt had snapped. Not only that, all the pulleys were completely rusted, so they just didn't move. So engines tend to want to move. This didn't. Also, all the interior electronics, it had a uh, triple flip down monitor setup. It had a footrest that also was a monitor. It had a wraparound couch that was made in denim. It had four monitors in the back and none of those worked. So I couldn't get any of those to work. Also, the stereo didn't work. Also, it smelled quite horrible because over four years, it was just uh, in the rain and in the elements. And as you can imagine, the seals weren't great. So all that rainwater came in and it destroyed a lot of the plywood that the uh, show used to put all the stereo equipment together. And also the fiberglass in the, the rear system, all that was cracking. So this van was turning out to be uh, quite quite a bit of a, of a project. But over the next 24 to 48 hours, uh, me and a friend of mine, Jared, we got that van to basically restore. Jared did all the mechanical work and I took care of the electronics and tried not to have too many sparks in the way. Uh, we had to resolder things. We had to uh, run power where there was no power before, basically fixing all the issues that the show had to make this van a living, like you can live with this van now. After that, it was a matter of bodywork, so I sent off the bodywork, all the, it had this almost one-off body kit. I think it was made by Serona or Buddy Club or one, one of the, the, the 2004 era body kit manufacturers. And I can't imagine that the Dodge Caravan tuning community was large. I can't imagine that that's something that they sold a lot of and we couldn't find new ones. So what ended up happening was I had to repair this, so I sent it off to the body shop, and a week and $1,500 later, I got this, what looked like a brand new body kit for my 99 Dodge Caravan. Now, what a lot of people don't actually know, and what I found out during the, uh, the research portion of this project, is that this van wasn't exactly the van that they started with. So when they pimped this ride, when they pimped this ride, they started off with a 98 uh, Plymouth Grand Voyager Espresso. And what happened with the show is that they saw that van and they were like, we can't do anything with this because it's it needs mechanical work, it needs body work, all this stuff. And they decided that we're just gonna get a low mileage 99 Dodge Caravan, which is essentially the same van, but for the purposes of the show, they just said it was the same van. And I don't know if they told that to the person that was, but they had to, I mean, the title is different, but they presented it as the same van. And apparently that was common practice in Pimp My Ride. 
I'm not sure exactly how long the van build took to, to do, but I think it was somewhere in the order of a few months because there was a lot of work done. I mean, they ripped out the floor. They put a false floor on. There's like a dance floor plexiglass thing with neons in it. They had to do an electric actuator for the uh, footrest monitor, which in itself weighed about a hundred pounds because it's this like thousand dollar piece of equipment. And they had to make a completely custom fiberglass enclosure for the back, which also weighed a ton. So this van had a lot of weight in it and it actually wasn't that practical. There was a lot of work done to it. You can tell that it was a good shop that did it, but they just rushed everything. And with that, the van didn't fare very well as far as the test of time. Since the van had a denim interior, as you can imagine, denim isn't a great car interior because you leave it in the sun and it fades. Also, if you put your arm on denim and you rub it for a while, like as you would in a car, it doesn't really wear well. So you had all these frayed edges everywhere. You had these weird stains that you can't get out with any sort of upholstery cleaner. Even if you used the, the hardest shampoo and conditioner, it wouldn't come out. So now you have this white stained denim splotchy mess where the sun hit it and there's no way to do it other than reupholster it. And I wasn't going to do that. So it's just one of those things where uh, I, I think I just left it and cleaned it as best I could. And then I just said, that's the uh, patina of the car. Now, the reason why I got the van in the first place is not because I really love vans or I really love Pimp My Ride. It's because I love cars with stories. And I figured that I could end the story by giving it to somebody else. And that somebody else is Tyler Hoover. Now, Tyler has bestowed upon me his greatest achievements, which are the F355 Ferrari that was burnt to a crisp, the Bentley Continental GT that spent 10 years in Russia, and my daily driver, my Mercedes S600, that actually wasn't bad and I do drive it every day. But I decided that since he is now expecting, or his wife is expecting, I think that he needs something a little more practical. So uh, I decided that uh, this van is gonna be his Christmas present. So that's actually uh, why I'm here. So I'm here because we're bringing this van, I mean, at the time of this recording, we're bringing this van to Tyler. I don't know how he's gonna take it. I hope he takes it well, because that van took a lot of work and actually way more money than I thought it was gonna take. But I think that uh, it's a present that he will enjoy, his daughter will enjoy, his wife will enjoy, and hopefully his entire neighborhood doesn't think he's now selling drugs. This month's car stories are sponsored by The Ridge. The Ridge makes a line of wallets and bags that are designed to be minimalist and help us just take with us the things we actually need. So check out the link in the description below for a discount and buy one for yourself or they make great Christmas presents. And be sure to let them know how thankful you are for their support of VinWiki.